What about leak detection? Since we have to be good plumbers, that means we've got to be able to find leaks, doesn't it? So what are some methods we can use to find leaks? Talk about it. We can use dye, that's one way. What else? A sniffer. A sniffer, electronic leak detector, a sniffer. Okay? That's good. I've got one of those. We'll use it. We can use dye if, if we get to that point. But what if the system comes in, a vehicle comes in, and it's not cooling, and uh, maybe you check the pressures, and the pressures are lower than they should be, and you think, well, how do the pressures get low? Somebody must have stole my refrigerant. <laughs> okay? There's not too many people out there stealing refrigerant. It's probably leaked out, right? So what can we do to, to observe where that leak is before we get the sniffer out, before we get our black light out? What can we do before we get these tools out? Visual inspection. Visual inspection. So I can do a visual inspection on AC system to find leaks. So what does an AC system leak look like without using this electronic leak detector for the black light? What can I look at? What will I see if the system has a leak? Wet lines. Wet. Moisture. Oily residue. If I see oily residue, moisture, or you know, just dark places, then that's probably an AC leak if it's on an AC component. So if there's a big, big oily spot on the condenser, probably I got a leak in my condenser. If there's a big oily spot where two lines go together, that's probably a leak. If there's a big oily spot by my compressor, then that's probably a leak because now refrigerant really won't leave a trail, but the oil that's mixed with the refrigerant will. So as the refrigerant's leaking out, it's bringing some oil with it. So we look for oily residue first. If we don't see any of that, then we've got to start looking a little closer. With an electronic leak detector, if we have one available, or if somebody has injected dye into the system, then we can run the system and then put on our cool yellow sunglasses here and turn the flashlight on and look for that leak. Okay? The dye uh, is something that is some manufacturers are putting in from the factory. But if they don't put it in from the factory, then we have to put it in. The way we put it in, one way is to use a dye injector. This dye injector has got a quick connect coupling on it that you've seen today. So we connect that quick connect coupling to the vehicle, then use the screw press to push the dye in. Once we put the dye in, we want to make sure that we put a decal on the system in a real visible location so somebody in the future will know that it's had dye added to it. If I don't put a decal on it, nobody will know that it's had dye put in it. So we want to make sure we use a decal every time. So once we put the dye in, we operate the system. And then that dye is going to go throughout the system and wherever it's leaking out, it's going to bring some dye with it. That's when we would use the black light, use the little flashlight that's a black light color and look around and see to see where the yellow is. The dye will look bright yellow at the leak point. You had a question? If someone did it and they didn't put a label there and you later down the road, someone else was going to dump some more dye in it, would it matter? Will it hurt to put more than one dose of dye in? No. Because all, all we're really putting in is a one-fourth of an ounce. That's a dose. That's a serving of dye is one-fourth of an ounce. So if we, if we dyed a vehicle two or three times, it wouldn't hurt anything. We typically don't have to do that. Typically, one dose of dye lasts the rest of that vehicle's life unless the vehicle's been flushed out for some reason. So is the label just to let them know so they don't have to and they can just right. start looking for the label? Exactly. Okay. So if I, have, if I bring a vehicle in that's got a label on it that's got low on refrigerant, I know I don't have to dye it. I just get my black light out and look. Yes. Is there any particular side of the system that is more prone to leak than the other? Well, you'd think the high side would be because it has higher pressure. Um, but there's, there's leaks in a lot of different places. There's a lot, lots of manufacturers have problems with evaporator core leaks. Lots of manufacturers have problems with these quick connect coupling leaking. You know, if it leaves in a bad environment, the, the condenser can leak. If it gets debris popped up against it like a rock or something like that can cause a leak. 
Uh, there's not any really any one location. We can have leaks just about anywhere in the AC system. Now, the thing, the thing about leaks, and we're out of time, by the way. It's 2.30. <laughs> but I'll, I'll stop here just a minute. The thing about leaks is they can be anywhere. And if, if I was trying to leak check this trainer over here, it'd be easy to find, wouldn't it? That could see everything, right? Can you see all those components in that cruise right there? No, you can't see hardly anything. So you've got to be real clever and real uh, logical when you're trying to leak test a vehicle that's covered up by shields and you know fascias and panels and so forth. So that's why uh, I like the dye method of leak detection better than the electronic leak detector. Because the electronic leak detector, you've got to get this probe at the leak point before it's going to give you any feedback. If I can't get this probe near the leak point, it's not telling me anything. And if I try to find get this probe at all the places that that vehicle could leak, it's going to be a real challenge. Okay? But if doing this, then I can that flashlight will go a lot of places. I can shine it a lot of places if I'm really cognizant and looking for where all those AC components are, where the lines run and so forth. And I can find leaks with this method a lot better than I can with this method. How would I find a leak in the evaporator core? Because the evaporator core is inside the HVAC box, isn't it? How am I going to... Can I get this up inside the HVAC box? What's that? Possibly, if it's a real bad leak, I might be able to pick it up at the vents. It's got to be a pretty bad leak. It's a tiny leak, I wouldn't find it. Can you put pressure on it? What's got pressure on it? It didn't have pressure. Could, put, could you put pressure on it to find out where the air was? Okay, if you had an empty system, you could pressurize it with something to see where, if you could hear the leak or observe where the leak was at. I'm just talking about a, a system that's got refrigerant in it. How could you find an evaporator leak? See where it's coming out of the... Exactly. And he's worked on AC before, that's the only way he knows that. If you haven't, if you haven't, if you haven't ever worked on AC, you it would be thinking at a high level if you, if you figured that out. Because, you know, the evaporator core is in the, is in the heater duct housing, right? It's in a big plastic box, right? And we said when the evaporator core is removing the heat, it's also removing humidity. So where does that humidity end up? Draining out the drain tube. So if I've got a leaking evaporator core, I've got yellow water coming out of the drain tube. Yes, with dye. That's how you find an evaporator leak. That dye never runs out. Once it goes in, it never comes out. It's it. I mean, one shot of dye should last the life of the vehicle because it's a sealed system. I mean, we're not we're not introducing anything into the system or taking out it on a normal basis. You know, now, if I have to replace a bunch of the components in the system and then I flush the rest of the system, then I probably need to put some more dye in there. Leak, 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 leak. Possibly, but it, it just hangs around. And, it, and another thing, when you get it on you, it kind of hangs around you <laughs> too. So you want to be careful not to get it on you. Yes. Will the dye affect the other test that you did with the yellow machine and the little blue machine? No, the dye is, is not a problem. It, it won't affect the identifier. It won't cause a, a negative test on the the sealer, the leak detector, uh, so it's it, won't not do to it won't contaminate. It's just coloring. It's food coloring. It's like food coloring. Okay? Any more questions?